the services industry, broadly speaking, up 95,000. This is a disappointment. Phil, I want to go to you first. What do you, because you were expecting something way north of 200,000 here. Let's, let's put this in, in, in uh, perspective. We, our model is showing 225K. What we told you at the beginning of the show is that August is the quirkiest month of the year. Mm -hmm. This month, August, misses by an average of 45,000 per on the flash and then gets revised up by 65k over the course of the next month. Uh, I'm willing to say that when we get to November 3rd or whenever that that uh, October report is, this number is going to be north of 200k. Uh, John Hills and Rep, to put it in perspective, because we've become accustomed to this 200,000 number, that yeah. 156,000 versus an estimate of 180 isn't that big of a disappointment. No, I mean it, it's it's a tiny it's a tiny uh, miss in an economy that employs north of 150 million people, and I just want to echo what what Phil just said. You know, the, these numbers, the, there's something about the August payroll numbers that tend to be quirky, and they tend to miss on the downside. So I'm not at all disturbed by 150,000 number. The three-month average, as Blake just reported, is 185,000. That is exactly what it's been for going back into 2015. So this economy is still, it's still growing at a decent pace, and it's still producing jobs at a decent pace. And a 4.4% unemployment rate is still a pretty low unemployment rate. So I don't find this, these numbers to be disturbing at all. Uh, Scott Martin, we're looking at the stock futures right now. 65-point gain on the Dow futures, heading up just ever so slightly, but really holding in there, really hanging steady. So certainly stock investors heading into a long holiday weekend, I might add, not disappointed with this number. No, I think there's something for everybody in this number, Dag, and it doesn't change things that much. Uh, you know, it was pointed out that the moving average, the three month, is, is, is just about where it's been for the last couple of years, and therefore with wage growth still pretty stagnant, uh, it's up a little bit, but you know, it's still pretty stagnant. It's not a threat to inflation just yet. You've got the market that can kind of hang in here and be confident that interest rates are going to stay low and stock prices can continue to be boosted. I'll tell you one thing that's interesting, though. We see GDP start to tick up potentially, 3%, maybe a little bit higher in Q3 or Q4. How does that translate in the job market? Because, you know, we've had these, these job numbers around 200,000 or so. Does that a GDP number, does that take it to, say, 225,000, 250? Mm -hmm. That's a question that we've got to ask, which probably will boost stocks towards the end of the year. Mike Block. Yeah, you know, the macro picture hasn't changed here, but what may have changed in these numbers is the market's picture. Now, right to the left of my head over here, you see the S&P futures up seven and a quarter. They're making highs here. They're 11 handles away from the all-time high. What's going on here is the, the numbers are a little disappointing, but they're not out of line here. Uh, call it wonkiness, as Phil, Phil and John pointed out. Uh, the wage number is disappointing. I'm not surprised because it, it comes down to productivity. That's a work in progress and has been for years, and they better get going on that. But in any event, there was a lot of negativity in the trading community. This number's out of the way now. And yesterday, the, chant, the, mark, the futures markets were putting about one-third chance on the Fed raising rates in December. We can debate whether that's a good idea or not, but the point is this data will get that number probably down into the high 20s. I haven't looked at what the futures are doing in the Fed funds market or the euro dollar market, but the point is it's less likely the Fed's going to get aggressive here. People like the status quo. They like the cheap money. That's how deals get done. Private equity gets to work. Uh, for markets, this is going to be taken very well. We'll see what the bond market does with this as well. Uh, a little disappointing. Should rally the bond market. And, oh, by the way, the fast macro money has been short treasuries here. So we could see a situation where there's upward pressure, not just on stocks, but also on treasuries. The yield on the 10-year is down ever so slightly. There it is. Uh, to um, to an 11%, 2.11%, which is still said. incredibly low, Mike Block. I, I want to get into some of these sectors just to bring people up yeah. to date on them, Deirdre. I, again, you have a manufacturing industry in this country that is really recovering and firing. Look at that. 36,000 um, jobs were added just in the manufacturing sector in the um, in the last month. Retail, still hard hit. Retail, back to school season, we had 800,000 jobs added there. But 28,000 jobs is added in construction. So that goes to yeah. the real demand out there for homes. This is a nice hold steady number, right? Overall, we're seeing that in the market reaction. And then as you're going through, Dagan, just sector by sector, I mean, manufacturing is one of the areas, construction, where people have wanted to see strength and government jobs cut, 
which is at least what this administration has been talking about doing, right? Kind of making government a little bit more efficient and uh, bringing the private sector, giving some support to the private sector as well. I love that idea of focusing on the labor force participation rate that you signal because that is key even when you look at the retail sector, right? Because there were a lot of people who could not get jobs that they wanted along with that U6 who were working in retail, so that's why that retail number is so interesting as well. Yeah, just 800 jobs added there in retail as it continues to struggle. And just to reiterate that the revisions to June and July, uh, it reduced the job growth um, combined in those two months by 41,000. But Rachel, you're on the ground um, and uh, you are really connected to your community, connected to Washington. Just what do you make of this number? It still is, it's a labor market that's growing, it's a labor market that's healthy. They, and again, manufacturing really coming back. Manufacturing, here. mining, construction. Um, I could feel this on the ground that, you know, these markets are tight where I live. Um, and I'll say, again, you know, manufacturing, these are jobs that Democrats were trying to tell us were gone forever. And they're back. And it's roaring. And it's making America great again. And we're seeing government jobs decline. This is precisely what the American people voted for. Um, these are exciting numbers. But again, we could feel this on the ground in Wisconsin and in the upper Midwest. John Hills and Rath, does this is something I raised with Rachel earlier because we talk so much, and you're down in Washington, so talk so much about the pro growth agenda, and we haven't yeah. seen anything come out of Congress yet. The fixing Obamacare not didn't happen, but with right. this tax reform plan, because the economy is doing well, because it is healthy, does that give those people down there in D.C. a pass on really pushing ahead something that could help the economy grow even more? You know, I, I, maybe it takes some pressure off of them, but the, the fact is that President Trump and Republicans have promised so much that I think there's a lot of pressure on them to deliver. If they get to the end of this year and there's, there's nothing to show for controlling Congress and controlling the White House, then I think that puts them in a tough position going into uh, elections in 2018. So I do think that they... The, the people that we talk to very clearly recognize they have to deliver something on taxes. I don't think they're going to be able to deliver everything they promised, but they have to get a headline out of that. 